welcome to Sex on the Floor podcast. This podcast was created to help educate the public about problems with sex and intimacy and how this is tied to both physical and mental aspects. Hosted by myself, Dr. Molly Hart, a passionate pelvic floor physical therapist and owner of Pelvic Balance Physical Therapy, and by Dr. Katie Schubert, a phenomenal sex therapist and owner of Cypress Wellness Center. We are here to have a good time. We're here to keep it real with you all and to educate along the way. I'm so excited for you to join us. We strive to help many relationships prosper in fun, safe, and healthy intimacy. While listening to the show, please remember that this information is not meant to diagnose or treat any medical conditions. Please speak with your medical provider for all things related to your health care. Hello, all. Welcome back to Sex on the Floor podcast. I'm here, Dr. Molly Hart with... And I'm Dr. Katie Schubert. We're here and we're going to be talking about returning to sex postpartum. Um, we've, we've hit on postpartum mental health and postpartum bodies a little bit in the last episode, in, in the last episode of our postpartum series, or I guess pregnancy series. Um, but we want to talk a little bit more about sex and how sex can and, and maybe should happen after having a baby. Yes. So a lot of um, misconceptions also with postpartum sex. There's this weird <clears throat> rule out there that at six weeks, I can have sex again. After my six week checkup, um, I get to have sex. And so I will, I'm going to sit here first up and say, I am not in support <laughs> of this weird made up rule. <laughs> um, and I want to talk way more about safety for you emotionally and physically before you resume intimacy with your partner um, and all the complications that are going to play into this. And hopefully the goal of this is to give you more understanding, more compassion for yourself and yeah, just really being kinder to yourself and not think, because this is a common thing I hear from my female patients is, Oh, but like at six weeks, like I have to have sex with my husband again. Um, like he's been waiting so long. He's been so patient. So I kind of want to help with this episode to give you more understanding of where you might emotionally be at, physically be at, and giving yourself some serious love and compassion of when it is appropriate to be intimate with your husband again or partner again, and it not be this pressuresome thing that you place upon yourself with all the 500 other million things you place on yourself with being a new mom. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Like being interrupted by, you know, I know, but she's, you know, I know. <laughs> this is why I'm outside. So Katie's <laughs> inside. I have chose, I was first in my van and couldn't get my internet working. And now I'm outside because I can't go in my own house. Um, because oh, it's kid territory. <laughs> I thought I locked the door, but apparently I didn't. Oh, so. um, bye. My baby is leaving the house with the nanny. Oh, Oh, lucky you. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna try to do this with her in here. She says, okay. she's gonna be "How are you with the language we're talking about in her fine?" Yeah, she um she tells all of the neighbors that she has yeah. a vulva and her brother has a penis, so they oh, all now know. Because uh, I'm vulva too. I'm like, wipe your vulva now, and I'm like, people are gonna yeah. go crazy. <laughs> Well, now the whole neighborhood knows the correct terminology and they can, they can think, they can thank me. I, I am now in the process of teaching her like literally everything anatomy that I can think of yeah. I'm like a whole body. And so I'm like, you're going to learn, you're going to know, because then if anything happens to you, you'll be able to tell me exactly what happened yes. versus my patients who have seven-year-old daughters who say, my vagina hurts or my butt hurts and then they they say their butt hurts and they point to the vagina or they say their vagina hurts and they point to their butt and they have no idea the difference yeah. that i'm like this is not acceptable yeah that's not like yeah that's ridiculous. no, no seven-year-old boy doesn't know the difference between his butthole his testicles and his penis so why why are we not knowing the difference between the holes <laughs> i know it's ridiculous no she knows she actually my um giant penis came in the mail the other day and <laughs> 
she showed the neighborhood children. And I was like, okay, that's one step too far. Mommy's going to hide the penis. <laughs> she showed your giant penis model. She did. Neighbors. She sure did. Because it, it had just come in the mail and I had just unpacked it and the kids busted in and the penis was sitting right there. Oh my God. Did you, That's hilarious. Did you have to tell their parents like, hey, we had a penis model? No. I just prayed that nobody went home and said, hey, I saw a big penis at Katie's house. I mean, <laughs> I mean they probably know what you do for their living. They're like, oh, yeah, it's just Katie. <laughs> oh, I, I don't live in that kind of neighborhood. They're very um, careful oh, about everything. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. You know, I thought I lived in that kind of neighborhood, but then I go to neighborhood parties and these parents get wild. And we're like on the water and they have pools and there's just kids running around everywhere. No one's watching them. I'm like, all right, like I'm going to be the sober one trying to make sure nobody drowns because like we live in Florida and that's the number one reason why kids cry. But like, all right, you guys all know they're like wild here. Um, (laughs) I am tame in my neighborhood and that makes me feel really good because I don't feel tame. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. I need you to come get her. I'm trying to do a podcast and it's not working very well. It's working great. I think it's working exactly as it needs to with two moms trying to do a podcast about postpartum sex. Where is she? Under the bed. She said she's going to make it. No, no, no. no. You got to come up. Okay. I actually like hope we keep some of this in there. (laughs) I'm cool with that. Viewers will love us. I mean, seriously. Okay. Uh. Anyways. So... I'm going to let you lead. Okay. So, um, so I do get a lot of couples in and, um, they're postpartum and one of their biggest complaints is that sex isn't happening. But when you ask more questions about why sex isn't happening, there's a laundry list of things that are, that are going on. And we touched upon most of those in the last session or the last, I've been doing some <laughs> the last episode. Um, so like she's touched out, she doesn't have any energy, he doesn't have any energy, he's feeling neglected, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why sex isn't happening. Um, but as you mentioned, there's a sec the six week rule um that that most I think OBs tell their patients you can have sex after six weeks. Um, and a lot of women feel like they have to make that happen at that six week mark, because either their husbands are waiting or they have internal pressures or they're just not feeling connected to their partner because they haven't had sex sex for six weeks or longer. Um, but you know, a lot of women say that if they do try to have sex after that six week mark, it still really hurts. Yes been after a cesarean um and I think we also talked a little bit about that in the last episode I can't, yeah not... I, I think we touched like a little bit on it so that's why I want this episode to be more in-depth in it there yeah. I should have pulled these stats up but there's some pretty good stats to indicate I mean gosh six weeks postpartum I don't recommend anybody has sex from a physical standpoint um I would wait minimum eight weeks. And that's just because of the way the tissues heal. So any type of tissue and tissue injury you have in your body, no matter what it's from, it's going to take roughly eight ish weeks for that tissue to heal a broken bone, um, a sprained ankle. I mean, you list it, you name it. So if we're having a vaginal birth or a C-section, both types of ways the baby's coming out, you're having significant tissue injury that is occurring. Um, the body will heal. It's okay. Tissue injury isn't the end of the world, but we have to respect the human body. And, you know, the thing is, is the human body is so slow to adapt and to heal. And in our society now where we have instant, instant, everything, that's, I think the biggest problem I see is people are not aware of how slow the body is and very patient with it. It takes it 10 months to make the baby. It takes so much time for it to heal The thing that's hard to understand too is, you know, it takes a second to destroy anything, to destroy a house, to get in a car accident, destroy your car, to destroy a a life. A a person can die like that. Um, I'm not trying to be like morbid, but that's the law of entropy. Like it's just chaos. So to build something up and to be in a better, healthier state requires tremendous time and energy. So it's important. We're really patient with ourselves. So if everything goes well with your birth and your pregnancy and the C-section's healing well, there's no, um, 
infections. There's no serious nerve injury. Cool. Eight weeks, I think is a good time. Physically, we can say, okay, but it's, are you really ready to, and you still need to go slow and be gentle with yourself. You don't just go right back into intimacy with your partner. Yes, absolutely. I tell my clients that all the time. I say, you know, it's a really great time to re-remember all of the things that you liked that don't always have to do with intercourse. So, you know, play around the foreplay, do other things that, you know, put your bodies together in an intimate way that doesn't include intercourse. Yeah. Because really there's, there's a ton of things you can do to achieve pleasure in a relationship or, to, you know, to achieve intimacy or closeness in a relationship that doesn't have to do with intercourse. But, you know, when, when couples are together for a really long time, they often just skip right to the intercourse because it's like the, the thing that they want to get to. Um, so it's a great time to push that pause button and get back to kind of the basics of what makes you feel connected to your partner. Yeah, I, I agree. There's really the biggest thing I've been learning a lot myself, even because I'm, I'm taking that, I'm taking a sexual course right now is, you know, we have such set rules when it comes to intimacy, especially with heterosexual relationships, which is, I would say the set kind of cultural rule is, um, I, as a woman need to be sexually available for my man. And it's the, the pleasure is just for him. So he can orgasm and uh, like, it's all about him. It's all about pleasing him. And I just need to do my duty, my chore as a wife. Like, I feel like that's kind of the weird message that a lot of people have. And I, I would like, if you can't try to literally throw that message away, cause it's just not helpful. It's not accurate. It's not proper, um, intimacy. If you want good intimacy with your partner, doesn't have to be intercourse. It, there's emotional, there's physical intimacy. And if we think about it, like from the physical standpoint, <clears throat> when you were pregnant, what felt good? And my course I was doing the other night, we were talking about how a pregnant woman was saying she loved when her husband would rub her belly. And so then postpartum, you know, she didn't have her belly anymore, but she still then added that in. Let's rub the belly. It still feels good. So like, what are things that you can physically do together that allow you to be really mindful and in the experience and having a safe, pleasurable experience physically with your body? That can be the touch. It can be smell, taste. I mean, all, all of these sensations, and it doesn't have to include penis into vagina penetration. Um, what are things we can do for foreplay? What are some fun things we can do with toys? So if this is stuff, maybe you didn't explore quite as much, maybe before you had a baby, I would say it's more important now because if we don't start adding in positive association, fun, pleasurable, positive association with intimacy with your husband, it is going to be last on the totem pole always, and probably just not going to happen. And slowly, little by little, there is going to be a drift and the intimacy in your relationship that can easily happen after a baby comes. It takes, I think, very intentional effort when you're in a couple with a baby to keep your intimacy alive. That's my perspective. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And also I want to add, you know, if you think back to like your high school psychology course, if you had, if you had one or your like psych 101 in college, probably the first thing you learned was, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And pregnant women are very low in that hierarchy, right? Or, uh, you know, newly non-pregnant women. So uh, yeah. uh, postnatal women. So they're, they're, they're lacking sleep. They're lacking energy. Their hormones are all messed up. Um, they might be suffering from anxiety or depression because of the hormonal fluctuations. So when you, when you think about Maslow's hierarchy, when you've just had a baby, you're working on those lower level needs. Oh gosh. Um, and sex is way up here. So I mean, if you're if if you're a new mom or a new parent, it's really important for you to give yourself some grace when it comes to to achieving those needs. Um, and it's okay to be in those lower level needs for a while, catching up on sleep, letting your hormones rebalance. So you can feel kind of normal again, you know, letting your body heal, your body's not going to feel like your own. I remember right after I gave birth, probably a week or two afterwards, my belly felt so funny. It felt like a bag of jelly. Like it was, it was empty and it was just, it was like this empty vessel I was carrying around and it, it, it moved like jelly and it did not feel like my body at all. Yeah. And even still, you know, today I had my baby 
seven months ago and I was working out this morning, I, I cannot move my body the same way that I did prior to having him. I can't, I can't do flutter kicks, right. Because of the, the C-section. So it, it takes so long to feel like your body is your own again, and that you have the strength to do the kinds of things that you want to do with your body that it just, it, I, I can't, I can't stress enough the importance of giving yourself time and grace when it comes to, you know, <laughs> meeting those upper level needs with your partner, which are things like, like full on intimacy, yeah. you know, when you're trying to feel safe and secure again in your body, in your life, in hit in, in, in his presence or your partner's presence. Um, and I, it, you know, don't rush it because you, you have a long time to figure it out. It's not like everything has to be crammed into that six week period or a six month period. Yeah. It's a slow process. What would you say to the couples that, cause I've had this where they, the male partner really wants to be intimate. He's telling his female partner, um, like, this is really important to me. We need to get this worked out. I, I can't, I, I had a, a, a patient recently like there was this like biological need. She's like, my husband needs to have sex. He can't, he can't not have sex right now. So that was a part of why she was coming to see me. Um, what do you tell couples that are go- women, especially who maybe have a partner who's not patient, who's not able to necessarily give the grace that she needs because he's so focused on his sexual needs. Cause that happens. Yeah. I just, I, I try to do a lot of psychoeducation with them. Um, some, you know, it's hard for men to understand what your body goes through and what your brain goes through. Um, and you know, <laughs> what your pelvic floor muscles go through. Yeah. It's really hard for men to understand. Um, you know, when I, God, the first night I brought my third child home, I'd, I'd never experienced this before, but I sat in this very chair and I just, I broke down for no good reason. There was no good reason for it. I just could not stop crying. And at James, my husband was walking by and was like, what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? And that made me cry more. Cause I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? Yeah. Like, I just had surgery. I have a baby. I'm tired. Like, I don't know if I'm hungry. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I what, can't stand up. What isn't wrong? Like what <laughs> isn't wrong is the question. <laughs> I'm wearing old, old lady diapers right now. Cause I'm bleeding so much. Like, yeah. What's, what's, what's wrong. Um, and you know, he, he was tired, right? Like he had, he had hung out in the hospital for a few days with me and eaten hospital food, but like, his body was still perfect. And, you know, mine was a complete fucking disaster. For the third um, time. For the third, yes, for the time. third time. For well, how many years now? How many years has the body been a disaster? Uh, you know? Yeah. But for real, yeah. how many years? When when did you get pregnant with your first child? Uh, my body has been a mess for about six years. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like, depending on how many children we have as women. Yeah. Cause each, cause like, I don't feel like I ever feel even semi good in my body again until at least a year, at least yeah. a year postpartum. So I'm not a little bit over a year and I'm still not even fully there. So mm-hmm. you keep adding on kids and it's just, you know, now six years and then it's a restart. Every time you have a baby again and you're postpartum, it's like, oh, I got to start all over again with rehabbing, I gotta start all over again. And it's, it's. When you're already so defeated feeling to know that you have so much work to do at your house every single day to care for these kids, let alone for your own body to like be at a place where you feel like it's your body again, it's, it, it can kind of hit you at times and you're just like, yeah, yeah. And the last thing you feel is sexy. It's like, this isn't, this isn't sexy. Like you know, I, I'm leaking, like in the very beginning, you're leaking, you're leaking from like every hole, right? Like your, <laughs> your vagina is like a baby There's fluid <laughs> everywhere. I tell people, I'm like, it's a fluid nightmare. It is. And it's not sexy at all, <laughs> you know? And then like, you know, you add breastfeeding to that, add pumping to that, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not a sexy time. Oh, you got spit up on your outfit because maybe just, you just fed from your nipples. That's now leaking on your shirt. And now they spit yeah. it back up on you. And then they had an explosive poop that also got on your, cl- yeah. Like it's, 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 it's a, I mean, it's beautiful too. Like I actually do think it's a beautiful time, but is it sexy? 
No, I think it's comical. I had a lot of laughs. I mean, you just have to laugh because it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what it is, right? It's like you and your partner are bonding in a different way. Like the in- the sexual intimacy might not be there and that's okay. Take that time to like get to know your partner in a different way because that that is like such an experience that you that you can have with a partner. Um, and, and you learn so much new stuff about each other in that time. I agree. Like, I will say, I think after I've had kids, I have allowed my husband to take care of me more, especially because I lost my mom. So I'm like, I sometimes just want to be cared for. I want to be mothered. When you become yeah. a mother, you want to be mothered so much. So if you have a husband who is able, capable, and if he doesn't know how to do it yet, if, if he's capable, if you're able to kind of help teach him <laughs> um how how do you like to be mothered and that is intimacy right there and that can be like for me him rubbing my feet um sometimes he'll want to be intimate with me and I'm like I just don't want to be and then he'll rub my feet instead and I'm like this is great wonderful or just lightly just rubbing not even like a scratch not even a massage but just like a light rub um the most simple things getting me some tea because I'm just laying in bed finally resting so these little simple things that you can learn how to recreate intimacy. It's going to be a hundred percent different than it was before the baby came. Um, Last little bits I want to go over from a physical standpoint is if you did experience a pudendal nerve injury. So the pudendal nerve is what innervates the clitoral tissues, the urethral area, the vagina, the perineum, the rectum, there's three branches to it. And so if you sustained a little bit of an injury to that nerve, which can happen after a vaginal birth, <clears throat> you can have pain and or lack of sensation um, and or weakness. And so we can see, you know, stress incontinence. So that cough, laugh, sneeze, you're leaking a little bit. Again, more fluid, doesn't feel sexy. Um, <laughs> and you might be having some pain. The pain, because we tear a lot of that perineal body, that vaginal opening, the pain often can be right at the vaginal opening. And so if you're experiencing that, some simple things that I can tell you to do is, this sounds ridiculous, but if you take your thumb and after you go pee and you've, you know, cleaned everything up, cause there's a whole protocol to take care of your vagina after you have a baby, it's so much work. Um, which I probably should just quickly mention what that is. You should have a perineal body, a perineal bottle that you put lukewarm water in and a dash of soap in. And you always are going to use that to clean yourself afterwards. You don't wipe. And you should hopefully have that witch hazel pads that a lot of hospitals will give you. And I always put three. I put one on the clitoral tissues, one on the um, kind of vaginal opening perineal body area, and then one on the rectum. And then you pull your you know little diaper pad device up, whatever it is you're using. But make sure you're doing that after every single one. You really want to take care of these tissues. And then if you can do sits baths, wonderful. I hate the sits bath bucket they give you. It is way way too much pressure on your perineum to be sitting on the toilet like that. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, what I would advise instead is if you have a bathtub lay down completely flat in the bathtub and just like completely flat. If you're not on a, like your back is and your head is on the bottom of the bathtub, fill up enough water just to cover the late, like the whole vulva, the whole vulva area and put some Epsom salt in there. So that is wonderful to help calm. You don't want the water crazy hot, but you want it to feel warm. And like 20 minutes every day that you can have the energy to do that, do it. So that's gonna help the tissues heal quicker. That's really, really important. Um, If you have a C-section, more what we see with intercourse being a problem is deeper penetration because of where the stitches and everything is. So you're not gonna see as commonly that the opening is gonna be the bothersome area. For that, This is not easy. And we talked about this last time, Katie is, um, you know, massaging that area, touching that C-section scar, which is so hard for Mm -hmm. to do as moms, mainly, especially when it's um, an emergency C-section. So if that's something you're struggling with, like maybe you can find a provider, a pelvic floor PT and, or there's other providers who will do abdominal massage gently to help create new safety around that area of the body that's pivotal is for us to feel safe around these areas that have torn because they're trying to heal the nerves are. And when we cognitively hate that area and dissociate from it, it actually prevents the nerves from healing properly. So from a physical standpoint, it will make it even harder to rehab and to connect with your body safely again. But, um, 
if the vaginal opening is sensitive, one thing that's so easy to do is you take your whole thumb, put it in the vaginal opening, and then you're going to put pressure straight down. So if here's my vaginal opening for those watching, and I put pressure straight down, I'm going to use my thumb too. Most of the pressure will be on the web of your thumb because that's at the opening. You're going to push straight down until it creates, you're edging the discomfort. You're going to have some discomfort there. Don't push into the pain, but edge it and then do five really deep diaphragmatic breaths. So you're going to deeply breathe in for four seconds and exhale for eight seconds through pursed lips. So count five times on your hands and then take your thumb and move it just slightly over, just like a little edge and pull to the side. So that's going to look like this. And you do that on the right side and the left side, just those three things that can help tremendously I had a lot of friends that I were like, oh, you know, sex is kind of painful right now for me. I just have them do that after they go pee a couple times a day. And they're like, oh my God, it worked. But if you're having more serious pelvic floor issues, then you need to go see a pelvic floor PT. Because it unfortunately, it does not just go away. Um, the stats on pain with intercourse postpartum are really pretty shocking how many women, more than 50%, like have pain even I think six months postpartum, which I was shocked to see that. So pretty way more common than I realized. Simple things you can do. I have an online course called the Happy V Formula that's very cheap, I think, and you can go through the whole protocol on there. If it is more significant, you don't have the money to see a pelvic floor PT, but don't allow pelvic floor concerns after birth. When you finally have the ability to focus on it, like you're not in that lower stage of survival, like Katie was talking about, um, please seek out help because pelvic floor concerns, they don't just go away. They actually just get worse and worse as we go on, and especially as we add on additional pregnancies and labor. So simple things that I want to kind of bring to your attention. Last thing is um, because the pudendal nerve does innervate the clitoris after a C-section and or a vaginal birth, you can have a lack of sensation in the clitoris that starts to occur. It's a really common thing. This actually happened with me after my daughter's birth. Um, again, doing Kegels. So rehabbing that pelvic floor by squeezing the muscle is a wonderful way to help that nerve re-innervate. And then this sounds silly, but doing what we call sensory discrimination around the clitoris and around the toes. So actually within our brain, the where the genital region sits it's right next to the foot. And so you can do silly games like having your partner touch a certain part of your toe and having to guess where it's at, or they can draw things on the toe. They can draw things on the vulvar, like the labia majora or right above it. It doesn't have to be on the clitoris itself. And then you have to guess what it is, like these fun sensory games. And that's a great way to help that nerve to become more um, aware of the sensations that it's it's getting as it's healing because it's a peripheral nerve it, it got damaged it can heal but you have to help it heal properly mm -hmm. that's good information yeah so that's big things i want to hit on and i'm kind of done there because i don't want this episode to be too long <laughs> <laughs> i know right we we have a bad habit of just talking and talking and talking but that's it. it's good it's good stuff it's good content is there any other things you feel we didn't hit I don't think so. Um, I think that we've covered a lot in this pregnancy series. Um, and again, like if you're, if you're listening and thinking about getting pregnant or are pregnant or just had a baby and have other questions, please reach out to either one of us and we will make sure to, you know, speak to those concerns or questions maybe in our next episode, or maybe we'll just contact you directly with some answers. Yeah, absolutely. So Perfect. I'm excited for our next episode that we have coming out to you guys. We are going to be covering anatomy for her and anatomy for him. So stay tuned for those fun episodes. Of course, the YouTube videos on those are going to be a little bit more helpful. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, and we'll have a, we'll have what probably new episodes published every few weeks now. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you at the next episode. Bye. We are Dr. Molly Hart and Dr. Katie Schubert, and you've been listening to Sex on the Floor podcast. We really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions and want to get in contact with us, 
You can follow us on Instagram at Dr. Molly Hart and at Dr. Katie Schubert on Facebook at Pelvic Balance PT and at Dr. Katie Schubert. And for more information about us on our websites, you can find us at pelvicbalancept.com and at drkatieschubert.com. 